Irina Hatfield is a Sydney-based artist who has also spent many years as an art administrator and curator. In the early 90s, Irina found herself in the remote Aboriginal community of Elko Island, where she set up what was to become a thriving Indigenous art centre. Irina recalls that time. I was at a crossroads in my life. I was at loose ends. My husband had died, my second husband had died. And I moved to Airlie Beach and I was thinking of opening an art centre there. And because of that, I wanted to stock something that was quite unique and something that was quite Australian. And I found that by networking, I, I could um, find out where the art centres were and how to access them. There was a missionary air service that would um, go to all the different um, art centres. So I booked a flight on those and organised a flight through Arnhem Land, which included Elko Island. Now it's very remote, Arnhem Land, still today. In the wet season you can only really fly in because the roads are flooded. Now Elko Island said, yes, do come, but we don't have an art centre. But we really want one. We've had one in the past and we don't have one today. But please come and have a look at the artist's work. So that introduced me to the community and the island. <laughs> Well, the artists were in a bit of a, a flux, I suppose. They, they were still making art and they were painting the type of art that they'd always painted. They were um, painting their dreamtime stories and their legends, which is traditionally the reason they made art that was never made as a commercial enterprise. Um, and at the end of whatever ceremony they were doing that they were using the art for, the works would be destroyed. So there wasn't really a commercial enterprise at that time. One of the most colourful artists was Charlie Machui, and he's also featured on the cover of my book, White Woman, Black Art, which I wrote about that whole experience. And um, um, he, he's interesting because um, Elko Island and North East Arnhem Land were the first, first Australians to trade with Asia and the um, Macassans would sail their ships down following the, the trade winds and they would trade things like knives and tobacco and um, metal implements and, uh, and at times romances would happen. Okay, so the captain of one of these, they're called prows, these particular ships, one of the prows fell in love with Charlie's grandmother. All right, so Charlie, um, Charlie's grandmother went off back to, to Macassar with the captain and uh, I think she stayed there for many years, probably had children, but eventually came back to Elko Island and was just welcomed back into the community with the children as well. So whether she then had um, a local husband, I'm not sure, but eventually Charlie was. When I started at Elko Island, all the artists were actually painting their traditional dreamtime stories and, you know, their, their yurichur and their dua moieties and so forth. Um, but I asked Charlie if he would paint his grandmother's story. Now, this was very um, new to the artists. They, they had never contemplated painting something about their own life or their own experiences. I said, you know, the history of your grandmother going on the Macassan Proud to Macassar and coming back. So he did a series of paintings for me and those pictures are now in the museum in the Northern Territory and they're there for posterity and the history of that. But no one was ever painting anything like that and that was quite important, I think, to have that history recorded. <laughs> We, we had a curator come up from the University of New South Wales and she was interested in, in weaving. And she came to have a look at what the women were doing. And she um, saw lots of feathered armbands and headbands and uh, lots of interesting basket weavings. And, and one woman actually um, would harvest the coconuts and, she made, and then she'd drill little holes around the tops of the coconuts and then weave a basket with, with a little a band. They were just using found objects and making really unique um, pieces. She asked if she could um, curate a show for, for the University of New South Wales, which we did. So, so the exhibition happened and I was, going, I was um, trying to tour the show through regional Australia. The director of the National Gallery of Victoria heard about it. She flew up to Sydney to have a look at it and bought the entire collection. 
and now it's at the National Gallery in Victoria for posterity. It would never have happened if we didn't have that, didn't have that gallery. Mm -hmm.